welcome back to Breaking Down Reach. In the last episode, we scouted out the Vieri territory with June and discovered a Covenant invasion force preparing for an attack on Reach. In this episode, the UNSC launches a full-on attack against the Covenant invasion forces. So join me as we become the tip of the spear in the fight against the Covenant on Reach. A recurring feeling throughout Reach's story is that of having a sense of hope, but simultaneously having that hope be beaten and battered by setback and defeat. This feeling can sometimes be exhibited in specific level moments, but also in entire acts of the story. This sense of hope and defeat hasn't been fully expressed up until now in my opinion. Allow me to explain. Previous three levels of Reach have encompassed a sense of looming darkness. A coming war or doomsday that the UNSC is ultimately going to have to face. Certain details about the Covenant's intent and ability to attack Reach are left unknown until the end cutscene of Nightfall. Even in light of the discovery of the invasion forces, the UNSC still has a chance to save Reach, at least from the perspective of the current state of the war during Tip of the Spear. All of these reasons are why I feel the first half of Reach's story is meant to portray hope alongside a sense of uneasiness. Reeling it back into Tip of the Spear and the following level, Long Night of Solace, feels more like a transition into the setback and defeat phase of the overall story. This really comes into light at the end of the level, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We open with a visual of the UNSC forces valiantly charging the Covenant and engaging in combat. But as we end the cutscene, a bridge gets blown out and almost all the Warthogs crossing get obliterated. The music shifts and I suddenly feel like our moment of triumph has turned into a moment of uncertainty. From here, we begin the gameplay section of the level. Noble Team's mission is to destroy Spire 1, one of many large towers placed around the Covenant landing zone. Spire 1 was one of many Spire installations set up by the Covenant to inconspicuously transport forces to the ground from the cloaked supercarrier, which we will see later in the level. With Cat by our side and a grenade launcher in hand, we begin fighting our way through the Covenant ground forces scattered about. Before taking out Spire 1, we are tasked with taking out an AA gun nearby, but not before getting a new toy dropped in by a pelican. Here for the first time in Reach's campaign, we get access to the Rocket Hog. Of all the Warthog variants, this has to be my favorite. The gunner is able to shoot off six rockets one after the other with a small cooldown occurring after you've fired. This thing just feels so powerful and is a ton of fun, especially with friends. We find the AA gun being protected by a handful of grunts, skirmishers, and elites. Also aiding in the protection of the AA gun is a ghost and revenant. Taking down an AA gun is pretty easy. Similar to the scarabs, they have a core that is protected with layers of shields. After you put some rounds into the shields, the core is exposed, and once damaged enough, it goes boom boom. Easy enough, right? Moving on, we dive deeper into enemy territory and get some help from a pelican to cross a bridge, which is pretty cool. Up ahead lies a mining facility under siege by the Covenant. They've dug in fairly deep, so it becomes ours and a handful of marines' job to clear the area and proceed to the next AA gun. While fighting our way through the various buildings and halls, we find dead bodies of the miners who formerly worked here. When I see these bodies, I begin to imagine what their situation must have been like leading up to their deaths. Were they alive the night before during the events of Nightfall? What was it like knowing a mass of Covenant forces was descending upon them? It must have been terrifying to be sure. On our way out of the mining facility, we pick up a new weapon, introduced in Halo Reach, the Plasma Launcher. It shoots four plasma grenades after being charged up for a short time. The plasma grenades can track enemy targets, which makes it more effective. I personally don't care too much for this gun, but it can be useful for clearing some enemies or destroying a vehicle. Our next objective is to take out a second AA gun, but this time it's protected by a wraith that took me way too long to destroy, and two hunters that also act as sponges to my revenant. After we take out the second AA gun, we fight off a few more Covenant and secure a landing zone for George and his Falcon to come and pick us up. I always enjoy this part of the level, except on Legendary. I'm telling you, this part is way harder on Legendary than you'd think, but other than that, I love blasting grunts and wraiths with a grenade launcher from above. It provides a mini power trip and also gives us a little bit of a break from all the previous ground combat. Upon passing through the energy shield, our Falcon is disabled by an EMP and we brace for impact as we spiral out of control to the ground. No one but George and ourselves survived the crash, and we receive our new objective to access the Spire control room. It is here that we get access for the first time to the jetpack. I personally don't often use the jetpack armor ability, but it can be useful as well as fun to use, and was a nice addition to the game when Reach came out. This area of the level also doubles as a map for Halo Reach's multiplayer, simply called Spire. We make our way up the spire and encounter a group of grunts and one elite ultra bearing an energy sword. While I was recording this gameplay, something weird happened with one of the grunts. Uh, as you'll see here, he just kind of stared at me while I tried to deactivate the shield. Whack, but uh, oh well. After taking out that grunt, we deactivate the energy shield protecting the spire and jump into the final cutscene of the level. This cutscene really brings to light what I was talking about earlier in the video. 
In the beginning, we lead the fight against the Covenant Invasion Force. We roll through and destroy two AA guns, clear out a mining facility, lay waste to enemies from above, and even destroy the Spire. All of this gives the UNSC a sense of confidence that perhaps they can stop the fall of Reach. But as we conclude Tip of the Spear, we see that all of our efforts didn't really mean anything. After barely making it into the Falcon with Carter and George, the UNSC Grafton moves in to destroy the Spire. While the destruction of the Spire is a victory, it is a short-lived one, as the previously cloaked Covenant CSO-class supercarrier, the Long Knight of Solace, reveals itself and blasts the UNSC Grafton, destroying the frigate entirely. Our sense of hope is fractured and our confidence broken, but not all of it. As I stated previously, I really feel the tip of the spear and the next level following it are the transition points from the hope that Reach can be saved to a conflict that ultimately ends in the fall of Reach. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the previous episodes of BDR, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified for my new videos. Until next time, peace guys.